Can ground effects work on an RC car? Over the past year, I have designed fan cars, I've designed insane aerodynamics like a Pikes Peak Racer, and I've even done active aerodynamics, but I haven't done ground effects yet. That's right, we are throwing it back to the late 70s when ground effects were just introduced in F1. Of course, they were eventually banned, but they're coming back. So I designed and built an under tray for my RC car that I hope provides me with the same level of downforce from the ground effect cars of that era. At least my goal is to be a little bit closer to the Lotus 78 as opposed to something like the Mercedes CLR if we just get the arrow terribly wrong. And that's because with a ground effect car, the bottom of the under tray has to be shaped kind of like a wing profile so that it accelerates the air entering from the front through the middle constriction. And as it speeds up through this middle constriction, the pressure has to drop according to Bernoulli's principle. And this drop in pressure creates a massive amount of downforce, which literally sucks the car to the ground without a fan. We will test our design to see if it actually produces downforce, and even more importantly, if that downforce translates into better performance. I'm also adding in some small wings so I can tune the aero balance. But before we do any of that, let's go ahead and test the baseline case to see what we start out with before adding any aero. The first test I'm running is a skid pad test, which is just me driving in a circle, uh, steadily accelerating to see what the maximum amount of Gs I can pull. And in the first case, I was able to pull 0.57 Gs, which really isn't that good, but this car has terrible weight distribution. This car understeers a lot, even with stability control on, and you can see if I turn stability control off, I get a lot of snap oversteer. So it's really not a well-balanced car. I also tried a rudimentary slalom where I'm just driving, kind of weaving as if there's some imaginary cones there, seeing what the max lateral acceleration I can pull. And in this case, I was able to get up to 0.84 Gs. And last but not least, I just did a really hard launch. This is kind of like a drag test. In this case, I was able to get 1.31 Gs. Now it's time to slap some ground effects on this bad boy. And the most important part was, of course, the under tray. I made this under tray on my vacuum former using a 3D printed mold and just used these silicon weather strips as side skirts to seal the tray off. And this was one of Colin Chapman's most important discoveries of the Lotus 78. The side skirts help seal the bottom portion of the under tray that has all your low pressure air from the outer portion that has all the high pressure air, maximizing your downforce. Once this is all slapped on the car, we can test if it actually does produce downforce with our outdoor wind tunnel. That's right, it's just a leaf blower. We start out with our baseline case with no aero, and you can see if I blow under or even directly on top of the car, I don't really get any appreciable suspension squat, which is what I'm using to gauge the level of downforce that I get on these cars. And then with the tray attached, you can see that when I blow under the car, I get enough suspension squat to completely bring the under tray down to the ground. Enhance. Enhance. Now it takes about four pounds to bottom out this car, which is almost the weight of the car. That is a huge amount of downforce for such a small package. And I also tested without the side skirts. And while you might see a little bit of movement in the suspension, we don't even get close to bottoming out, which means the side skirts do exactly what they're supposed to do and optimize the downforce. After throwing the wings on, we can do some real world testing. We're gonna repeat the same three tests we did previously to see if we can log higher accelerations with our new downforce. And go. On the skid pad, I was able to accomplish 0.67 Gs, which is 17% higher. And on the slalom, I was able to get 1.03 Gs, which is 22% higher. However, on the drag test, I got almost the exact same value with 1.31 Gs. And I believe that's because the motor is actually power limited when it gets to the speed at which the arrow is most effective. So it really doesn't do anything positive. It actually probably is a negative because of the added drag. 
If I had a more powerful motor, we'd probably see a bigger benefit. And eventually I ripped the under tray off while testing. So it did allow me to drive around with just the wings and on a subjective note, I definitely feel like the under tray did its job. I do realize that this isn't that scientific of a test because there are so many variables at play here, tire temperatures, calibration of accelerometers and all those things. But I did see a consistently higher lateral acceleration in the case that I had the ground effects attached. We could visually see the car crouch itself all the way down to the ground because of the downforce with our leaf blower. So we know they do work. So while I don't have a wind tunnel to characterize exactly how much downforce we get as a function of velocity, I can confidently say that I am getting some downforce from these ground effects and I feel like it would be a benefit in a racing situation. Which is pretty awesome considering this was done on a shoestring budget in my garage. So overall, this project is definitely a success in my book and I would love to take it further. As a matter of fact, I did take it out with higher speed gearing to see just how far I could push the car, but of course, I shredded the internal gears on the transmission because the stock transmission is not set up to handle this much torque. So until new parts come in, I really can't do more testing. But some good news is that ground effects are coming back to F1 for the 2022 season, which is awesome for two main reasons. The first reason that ground effects were beneficial is because for a given level of downforce, they're less draggy than wings. But more importantly, it creates a lot less dirty air behind the car, so theoretically you have closer and better racing as the front wing of the following car doesn't lose 50% of its downforce. And so hopefully this provides some much needed improvement to how aggressively and closely competing cars can race in the 2022 season. Additionally, the 2022 car is designed to not use sliding skirts like cars from the late 70s and early 80s. Instead, it's a much more complex aerodynamic arrangement that seals the under tray with aero as opposed to physical sliding skirts. Now we just have to hope that the budget caps don't limit the teams to testing with leaf blowers and parking lots. Now for a few quick notes. The front wing probably does limit a little bit of the effectiveness of the under tray, but I'm using the front wing to try and balance out the aero overall because a lot of it is biased towards the rear, mostly because of the position of the under tray itself. Second, this car understeers really bad because of the terrible weight distribution of a Traxxas Slash coupled with a relatively high center of pressure for what you'd normally see in a race car. So I'm really trying to limit as much understeer as I can. And if you're curious about the design of the wings on the car, I cover those in one of my active aerodynamics videos. In short, I believe they both produce around 2 to 2.1 pounds of downforce at 45 miles an hour. But I haven't watched those videos in a while, so you may want to double check for yourself. Thanks everyone for watching. That's all I have for this video until I get some new parts for the transmission. If you have any questions, please feel free to let me know. Otherwise, I hope to see you on the next project.